Hallelujah. Good morning. Good evening. Yes. Hallelujah. So thankful and grateful to be in the house of God. Yes, Lord. So glad to be alive. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I think at this age here, we got more days behind us mm -hmm. than we do in front of us. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Life is so fragile, we should not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She said, listen while you still while you can, can hear. hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a verse in that song that says, Get down while your knees can still bow. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. You know, people want to people want to do stuff after they can't do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Bishop Barron a long time ago. He he was he was exhorting us. He said, when folks are young and healthy and strong, mm -hmm. they want to serve the devil. Yeah. But when they get old, decrepit, and can't move, <laughs> now they want to come into church now. <laughs> when they can't do that, now they want to sit down on the Lord. But when they had all that energy, when they had all that get up and go, uh -huh. we wanted to serve a different master. But God is so gracious and so kind to us. There's a, a verse of scriptures that says that he's long suffering towards us. Yes, he is. That means he puts up with us yes. and what we doing yes. and what we shouldn't be doing. Right. Right. He's still good to us. He still yes. loves yes. us. Yes. He's still kind yes. to us. He ain't yes. throwed us away because of what we're doing. And even when we wait to come and start serving him, when our energy is failing, when our health is failing, mm -hmm. God is so good. He still accepts us just like we were born. And the Bible even calls us newborn babies. Uh -huh. he, he takes us back, you know. But one thing I found out about God, God is a redeemer of the time. Yes, he yes. is. So don't ever think that it's too late or, you know, I done got too old. You know, he even showed us, you know, if you go back to Genesis with Abraham and Sarah, he showed you that it's not too late. Sarah, Sarah laughed at it. I probably would, too. <laughs> you know, so you're going to have a baby. Sarah said, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But. He redeemed the time. He opened up her womb at that age, 100 years old. What it let me know with that was God can resuscitate dead things my God. in our life. My God. That's what it showed me in that scripture. God yes. can resuscitate. He can bring back to life what we thought was dead. Yes. And what we thought we couldn't do. So even when people come to God at their, in their old age, when they're 60 and 70, when their health is failing, and when they can't move like they used to, God has the ability to restore them. He even says in his word that he can restore what the canker worm, what the devil stole from you, what he took from you, from where all that running out in the street and all that doing everything you could do that you thought you were bad enough to do. God can restore back to you all those years that you wasted. And I thank God for that. Yes. But I wanted to play that song because she says, listen, why you still can hear. Yes. Mm. As if there's going to come a time when you either can't hear or don't want to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real good. It's real good. I'm so glad I got a vision, though, for my life. I'm so glad I don't live just in today. See, if we don't get a vision, I'm, I'm all the way down. I'm, I'm, I'm all the way in the next year, 2025. Will I get there or not? If the Lord delay is coming, I got a plan for 2025. Amen. I got a vision for where I see myself, where I see my granddaughter, where I see our, our children and those things there. But if you don't get a vision for your life, you just stuck in the here and now. And your past is behind you, but your future is in your hands. Let me say that again. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, your past is behind you, but your future is in your hands. And if you don't get a vision, your future stays where your past is. See, your past wants to hold you back. Uh -huh. And there were some good things now in our past. Now, everything, we don't negate everything. And God even showed me, too, there's some bad things that we still need to remember. Uh -huh. Why well, I need to remember some bad things, God? He said, so you don't do it again. 
Yeah, yeah. That's why they say chastisement now in the present don't seem to be uh, what we want. We don't want chastisement no, at all. Want, <laughs> want, you know. But the Bible says it brings about peaceable fruit. Peaceable fruit. Yeah. David said, if you had not afflicted me, I would have continued to go astray. Uh -huh. He said, but because you afflicted me, because you allowed these things to come upon me, God, I'm on the straight and narrow now. I hear you. God said, can you hear me now? <laughs> he let some things happen in our lives to get our attention. Yeah. What I want you to do now, we're going to get ready to grow our road. If, you, if you're under the sound of my voice, you got a digital device, a phone, or an iPad, or, or whatever, you, whatever kind of digital device you got. I want you to go on that device, find this service on there. We're on Facebook. Uh, they told me the Instagram, I don't know, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all the other stuff. You can go on there. Yeah, YouTube and all that and find this service. And all you got to do, just like I'm doing right now, all you got to do is share it. All I'm doing, I'm just going down the line, just sharing it with some folks. Amen. I don't know if they sleep. I don't know if they're awake. I don't know where they're at. I'm just sharing it with them. Amen. Why, why are you doing that? So they can get a word. Like I'm Amen. here. Amen. So they can get a word. Glory to God. You may not get it right now. Maybe they wake up later and get a word. Glory to God. I'm just sharing it with them. Praise God. I want them to receive what I'm receiving. And what you just did just then, you just grew your rope. I said, there ain't that many people in here. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of people online. You can look if you go online, you can see those that, that are online. And then I found out too, you can be eavesdropping on people and they don't even know you watch. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, know how to do oh, that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, folk be eavesdropping. They be watching you and don't even want you to know they watch it, praise God. But they get the word. Uh, we're getting ready to do the 24 hour prayer and we're asking those of you that can and will. We want to pray for 24 hours. That means we want somebody to pray every hour of a day, right? So we have a sign-up roster. And thank God for those of you online that, that sent in uh, your request. And we plugged you in on the hours that you want to pray. Yeah. And those yeah. of you that's here, when you leave here, you can go out in the foyer. And you can sign up and be a part of that 24 hours of prayer. We Please don't sign up if you don't plan on praying. Amen. Please don't sign up. It won't offend us. It won't hurt us. But we need people that's going to pray. We need people that are going to stop, drop, and pray. That's what we need. Stop, drop, and pray. Prayer is so powerful. It's the tool that God has given us to commune with him. Also, what prayer does, prayer brings heaven to earth. Prayer brings heaven to earth. Yeah, that's how we get heaven to earth, through our prayer. So we're going to ask, if you can, and we'll please sign up for that. We talked a little bit about our food pantry and our clothing. We, we dropped off a whole truckload of clothes uh, just this week, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. We dropped off a whole truckload of clothes down to the shelter to be given out to people. Why are we doing that? Because right now we're not giving out. We have coats and different things. See, people thought the winter was over with. But I tell you, you could have had a coat on yesterday. Last night, you needed a coat, praise God. So we have those things there still to give out, still to ensure, to make sure people have what they need. But we give out food almost every week on, on the week. There's somebody calling. These people don't go to church, but they'll call the church and ask for food. And because it's a staple and a mandate of this ministry, we tell them to come on in and get some food. It ain't, a, it ain't mandatory that you come to this church or, go, or make your membership at this church because we gave you some food. No, we're doing what the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Yeah, whether you go here or not. So when they come right now, our can campaign, because everybody that brings in canned goods have built up our pantry. We have so many non non-perishable things, but now what we need to get, we gotta put some meat with those potatoes. Yeah. yeah. You can't just give them some potatoes. You got to give them some meat, praise God. So we're asking, and we thank God for those of you online that have donated and sent in, sent in your uh, monetary offerings and things of that nature. That's going to help us get some meat, praise God. Because when we put these boxes together, we want to make sure that we have enough for a couple days' meals, praise God. I want to give you a couple dates to remember. I want to throw these out to you and put them on your calendar. Please be abreast of these dates. August the 25th. That is our church anniversary. We would love to have everybody present on that day, yeah. August the 25th.
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Is it back on our devices? Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Man, I'm talking up here. Talk to you. Are y'all ready for the word? Let's go yes. into our scriptures today. We're coming from second. Oh, I put, oh, first Peter. I had to read it. First Peter, the second chapter. Verses 9 through 13. I'm going to read out of the NIV Bible, which might read a little different than your Bible, but all roads lead to him. When you get to 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 9 through 13, it's customary in this house. We stand for the interest of the word. We're going to start reading at verse 9, and it says, but you, good Lord, somebody say me, a chosen people, you are royal priesthood. A holy nation, God's special possession, yes, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out, out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11 says, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, yes, sir. which wage war against your very soul. It says live such good lives among the pagans or among the world, if you would, uh -huh. that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds. And glorify God on the day he visits us. Woo. Verse 13 says, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. That means to your boss on your job. That means to the, to the ones that's over the church. To every human authority. Whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. To governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will, man, that's powerful, uh -huh. that by doing good deeds, you should silence ignorant talk of oh foolish people. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we've opened your holy word today, Father, we pray now, Father, that your spirit, which is the teacher of the church, Father, would come in, sup with us, Father God. Direct our minds and our thoughts, Father God. I pray now, Father God, that every thought, Father God, be taken captive right now, Father. Every evil thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you, God, I pray now, Father, that you would arrest our attentions. Corner our conscience right now, Father God, and have your way in this place, God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen and amen. amen. Go ahead, give somebody a high five and tell them it's all about him. It's all about him. Yeah, It's all about him, praise God. What we're talking about today, if you just need a title, it's called out to be called in. Hallelujah. It's called out to be called in. I don't know if you caught it in verse number nine when he said you are a chosen people. You are. Yes, you you are. are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Yes, I mean, look how big it got. You see, you missed it. See, so that's why I say you can't read the scriptures too oh, fast. Okay. He started with you. He said, but you are. He started with you. That's just you, right? Yes. That's just you. Uh -huh. Then yeah. he said, you are a royal priesthood. You got a little bit more then. Got a little know. bit bigger then. Uh -huh. Then he said, you are a holy nation. Oh, my God, you got the, the nation now. Look how big that thing got. They, if you read the scripture back in, in, in Genesis, the, the children of Israel, don't you know they numbered in the millions? Mm. <laughs> so I was thinking about when they went through the Red Sea, that must have took a long time for them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they were waiting and waiting and waiting, but they could look back. The enemy was coming, praise God. But it wasn't until they all got across. Right. Uh -huh. right. He said, you are a royal priesthood, a holy Nation. Yes, we are. I like the NIV version because it says you are God's special possession. Yes, we are. Ooh, I love it, man. That means I'm something to him. Yes. And then if you keep moving down, he says that you may declare the praises 
of him yeah. that called you out. Did yeah. you see it? Did you yeah. see it? He, what did he call me out of? See, God has to call us out before he'll ever call us in. Mm -hmm. The problem is some people are trying to operate like they in, but they have not come from out. My God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, he's an orderly guy. He don't do things haphazard. He don't, do, he don't cut corners. He don't go to second base without touching first base. God does things in order. He going to call you out before he calls you in. Yes, he will. And some people are trying to act like they in, like they in, but they still out. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this is, let me help you before we even jump into this message. The problem here is your fruit is eventually gonna show. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. We so come on, they got guys. they got this thing in the world talking about fake it till you make it. Well, you can't do that with God. No, you don't fake it till you make it with God. Now, your fruit is going to show. The Bible says he knows them who are his. Yes, sir. And he just told you who you are. Yes, he did. He said, you are. You are. God, he told, he told us who we were. He said, you are my chosen people. My royal priesthood. Uh -huh. My holy nation. You are God's prized possession. Yeah, this ain't no fake it till you make it. I belong to you, God. Yes. I belong to you, God. I'm yours, God. That's the reason why we played this song. Listen while you still can hear. What am I What am I listening for? I'm listening for him to call me. Yeah. Come on, I'm listening for him to call me. And look, he's going to call each and every one of us. Yes. That's why some people, they messed up in their mind. You trying to operate in somebody else's call. He didn't call you to that. That's why you can't see somebody. That's why they told me one time. I was just in the church trying to help. I was one of them people. They asked me to be over here. I'd be over here. If I get over there, I'd get over there. One time I jumped up in the choir. They told me, that ain't your call. <laughs> that ain't your call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I thank God that, that mature people Know how not to hurt you. Amen. Amen. No. Amen. Oh, you you come over here. This way you can help out real good right here. We got so many, we got so many things in the church that you can do. Why do people try to do what they can't do? And then when you ask them to do what they can do, I don't know. <laughs> no, just do what you can do. And what you can't do, God will do. Yes, yes. He will. Yes. 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 I'm waiting for God to call me. That's what I'm listening uh -huh. for. And God always calls. Those that he say are his chosen people. Yes. He calls his people. That's the reason why he say the world can't understand me. The world can't understand God. Why? Because he hasn't called them. Wow. And if he did call them, what they did, they ignored them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes, and I'll show you in a minute. It's a danger when you ignore God's call. Amen. There's a danger in ignoring God when he calls us. Look here, we've, been, we've taught you this before. So what I'm going to preach today, for some of y'all, it might be new. But for most of y'all, it's just a review. Uh -huh. We've taught this before. What do you mean, Pastor, when you say called by God or called out to be called in? What are you uh -huh. talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked. A calling from God is a process by which the Father draws or calls us or a person to himself. Uh -huh. He God don't call you to no church. God calls you to him. Yes. He calls you to him. Yes. You got to be called to God. See, I serve in the church because I'm called to him. Mm -hmm. It's a, pro a byproduct of me first being called to him. So being called to God, every, every individual is going to get a personal invitation to salvation. A personal invitation to salvation. That's the first call. See, some people some people think they call the one thing. God said, no, first you need to accept this call. And what many people do, and they're looking at their phones, they're looking at the call ID, and they don't answer when he called. Uh -huh. And he said, I'm calling you to salvation. That's the first call. See, now we know and we understand that throughout the scriptures, there are several calls, y'all. Don't yeah. get caught up because people talk about this call, that call. I, I, I even went online and they talk about 15, 20, 30, 40 different calls. Uh -huh. God only calls three main calls. Amen. 
I'm going to show you today. It's in scripture. God only makes three main calls, y'all. And I just told you one of them, the call to salvation. That's the first call that God makes. There are only three calls that God makes. What are they, Pastor? It's a heavenly calling, a holy calling, and a high calling. Come on, somebody. Those are only... Say it again, Pastor. All them other calls that they talking about, they got to be within one of those calls. Right. It has to be a heavenly calling, and that's the first call that all of us get. Uh -huh. That's the call to salvation. Yeah. It has to be a holy calling. Is the next call. He don't. You ain't. He ain't called you to be holy if you ain't saved. Hello. Somebody said, "Well, I'm holy." No, you ain't holy if you ain't saved. Glory to God. How you gonna be holy? If you ain't saved. First, you gotta accept the first call, and the first call is a heavenly call. He calls all of us to Him. I ain't got a relationship with him. How you going to be holy? And how you going to be in the high call of God and you ain't holy and you have not accepted the heavenly call? My God, come on, Pastor. Those are the three calls of God. Yes, sir. And he calls us out mm -hmm. before he calls us in. Yes, sir. Some people, remember I told you, that's how I thought I could operate in church. I'm still, I'm still in the street. I thought I could be one foot out, one foot in. Shake it all about. He said, no, you're going to get caught out. Because you can't fake it till you make it. You can't. Not with God. You can't put on a church face for these folks. He said, what about me? I see everything. He said, you can fool them, but you can't fool me. And what I didn't have with God, I didn't have a personal relationship. No. I had, a, I had an affair. With God. My God. Mm. My Lord God. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I see you on Sunday. Jesus. Mm. But during the week, mm. I'm going to be doing my own thing over here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Me and the devil. Jesus. So here are the three callings the heavenly calling, the holy calling, and then there's the high calling. Uh -huh. I told you, some of y'all, this ain't even new. Y'all, this is just a review. Let's deal first with the heavenly calling. Where you getting that from, Pastor? Right here in Hebrews, the third chapter. Just bag up from right there in, in 1 Peter. Bag up a little bit and you'll be right in Hebrews. And go to the third chapter, first verse. Third mm -hmm. chapter, first verse. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says this. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly, heavenly calling. Mm -hmm. It says, consider the apostle and high priest. Of our profession. What is your profession? What are you professing out of your mouth? What are you saying? Because the very thing you say, that which you can have. Are you confessing Jesus Christ as Lord? Because once you confess him as Lord, guess what? You just accepted the heavenly calling. It's right here in your Bible. Don't make it up. It's right here in your Bible. The heavenly calling is a call to salvation. And when you accept that call, we take you to Romans uh, and we give you the road to salvation. What is the road to salvation? Believe in my heart. Confess with my mouth. Profess with my mouth. What am I professing? That Jesus is Lord. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I'm not make, I'm not telling him who he is. I'm, I'm telling, if anything, I'm telling myself who he is. He already know who he is. <laughs> he don't need you to tell him who he is. You Lord. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have to walk in no place talk about if somebody tell me, you LT. No, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same one. Yeah. No, he's been Lord from eternity to eternity. So he knows who he is. Our assignment in the heavenly calling is to accept who he is. Yes. And then this is what you do when you accept him through salvation. He becomes Lord over my life. Lord over my oh, life. Come on here. Oh, now he becomes yeah. Lord over my life. I've accepted him. Now, what happens, you know, Lady Willie was talking up here and doing the offering. He can't just be Lord over some things. That's right. He got to be, he say, I'm Lord over all or not at all. Uh, uh. And sometimes we want him to be Lord over this, but not Lord over that. And that's where we grow in grace. That's how we mature as Christians, because what we start to do as we grow in him, we start to relinquish things to him. See, when you first got saved, you know you didn't give him everything. You was like you was like Peter, them in that boat. You didn't trust him with everything. Now, hold up now. 
So I got to watch it first <laughs> and give you everything. That's why you held some stuff back from God. That's why Lady Willow was talking about our finances sometimes. We hold that back because that's why he said where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. So I ain't gave him my heart yet all the way, so I held some of that back. He don't fully get my heart because I ain't ripped. See, remember I told you I was just dating him. I was just meeting him on Sunday. So he wasn't getting everything. On Monday, I didn't I wasn't having no time with him. On Tuesday, I wasn't with him. On Wednesday, I wasn't with him. So he only got what I gave him on Sunday. Yeah, we were just in a fair. Jesus. We were just in an affair, glory to God. But as I started to walk in him, after I accepted the heavenly calling, I started to relinquish more to him. Why did I relinquish more to him? I started to realize that I could not carry nor take care of what I thought was mine. Mm. Mm. I had to realize. He said, oh, this, uh, your kids over here, them yours, right? Then we start having problems with him. You're like, oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Then, oh, that's your spouse. Now you're having problems with you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You do like uh, yeah. Adam did. The, the woman you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> now you want to blame God for what he gave. Now you start realizing, because that's what Adam did. He realized that it wasn't him. It was God. Wow. Uh, yeah. Not only was he blaming God, he was really telling God, that's your, that's your woman. And God let him know, and you mine too. Yeah. <laughs> so as we start to walk with God, what do we do? We start to relinquish more to him. Especially when whatever we got start giving us problems. This is the reason why the Bible says when you start to fully give yourself to God, you know what you got to give him? All of me. Because the enemy wants to attack not only your body, he wants to attack your mind. And if the Bible says if you don't have the mind of Christ, then what you really got is the mind of the world or you got the mind of the devil. Now, I told you it's three forces in your head. Come on. Right. Y'all that heard this before now. It's three forces. You, God, and the devil. Oh, it's three voices in your head. Now, some of y'all probably got four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, y'all got it. That's another problem right there. Glory to God. But there's three main voices and many times it's two against one. This is the reason why I got to hear. I got to use my ear while I still can hear. Why? Because I need to hear him when he speaks to me. Man. There's too many people saying that God is speaking to them about somebody else. <laughs> yeah, God told me about you. Mm, I've been here. Yeah. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to rebuke you. Oh, my God. Do he tell you anything about you? He don't say nothing about you. He just got you on watch for everybody else. No, you know what that is? That's you listening to one of them other two voices. <laughs> That's what that is. Because the first person God wants to talk to, because he's big enough, he's bold enough, he's bad enough, the first person he wants to talk to is you. Mm -hmm. yeah, he said, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. He ain't no listen to him warning you about somebody else when you don't even hear him when he talks to you about you. <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. No, that's just you. When you don't like somebody, that's the devil. <laughs> the folks ain't the devil. You just don't like them. And that's the two voices telling you something about them. God said, but let me tell you something about you. And that's what we get in the heavenly calling. Because in the heavenly calling, what we realize and recognize is, I need you. Amen. I need you, God. Not nobody else. I need you. That's the reason why we can be in a church service or wherever you got saved at. I got saved on the street. Came to church, though. And what I came to church do, to, to do was to let everybody there know I accepted him where I was at. See, yeah. because you can accept God outside here on the street, on the corner. I, I led a man to Christ right out there in August in the hot weather over in Oak Grove. And that man there ain't came to church now that I know of. He didn't come to our church, but I led him to Christ. Amen. Right there on the street. You're talking to and then my, my wife will tell you, and everywhere I go, when I leave the house, even now, in, in my wallet right now, I have several cars, several tracks that I'm handed out. If I run up on somebody, they're going to get a track, praise God. Why? Because I want to share Christ with them. Amen. Because I realized that some point in time, I needed him. Amen. And they have to realize for them own self. That's why I don't go trying to preach Christ to everybody in my family. Y'all need to stop doing what you do. He didn't do me like that. Amen. You got to hear him for yourself. Mm -hmm. I say, son, you do what I gave you to do. He said, but when I talk to them, they going to hear me. And that's why you know it's God. Somebody can come to you and say something, but they only a confirmation of what God has already told you. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, my God. That's how you just, I get scared then. Ooh. 
you looking at them. <laughs> there ain't no prophet. God just used them because he spoke to you. Then he sent somebody to say what he said. So you looking at them like, oh, my God, you a prophet. <laughs> That's what that woman told Jesus when, at the well when Jesus started telling her about herself. She said, oh. Now, at first, at first she said, you a, you a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. First thing, you black and I'm white. <laughs> First thing she do, she noticed their differences. But when Jesus started telling her about herself, she said, oh, 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 oh you, oh, you a prophet. <laughs> Glory to God. She got it all off of that. And that's what God will do when he starts to speak to you. He'll start telling you about yourself. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And what we do, if we smart, if we got any amount of sense, we need to accept it. Yeah. Accept that holy calling. Because without accepting that holy calling, for, I mean the heavenly calling, forget about the holy calling and forget about the high calling. You got to accept the holy calling. You got to accept that call. But some people, they done been in church, they done been around church so long that they think that they can skip some steps. Mm. Been in the church 40 years. Mm. What is he talking about? I'm holy. Mm. Can quote scriptures, can speak in tongues. Hashanibo Shubu riding in a pink cat lacking. They got all this stuff right here and they highballing and they figuring, who is he talking about? Of course I'm holy. Of course I'm walking in the high calling of God. And they have not even accepted the heavenly calling. You've been here 40 years, but you ain't even accept the heavenly call. My God. The next calling is the holy calling. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you got to get that heavenly calling or else don't even go here. Because here, here is where we get consecrated. Good God Almighty. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. This is where a lot of people don't want to be in. Remember I told you, he becomes Lord over your life. Why? Because as I walk with him, I start to relinquish more to him. And as I go through the calls today, how he called you out to call you in, you start to relinquish more to him. And guess what? He takes you to another level. Yes. Uh -huh. In the holy calling, which is found in 2 Timothy, go back past Peter over there. Uh -huh. and when you get to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the ninth verse, yes. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the ninth verse. I'm reading the NIV. It says, so do not be ashamed. There you go right there. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. He said, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. That's what Paul is saying to Timothy. He said, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me. Because some people act like they're ashamed of where they go to church at. They're ashamed of the God they serve. They're ashamed because they feel like they need to look a certain way for people. God said, and I told him on yesterday, God said, why are you ashamed? Why are you worried about who in church? He said, I'm there. He said, I'm there. That's who you got to The main person is there. <laughs> and Paul says to Timothy, he said, don't be ashamed of our Lord. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he said, don't be ashamed of me. Paul was Timothy's teacher. He said, don't be ashamed of me. He said, rather join with me in the suffering for the gospel, for the power of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has saved us yes, and he has called us yes. to a holy life. Woo! Ah, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. He didn't call us to a holy life. Not because of anything we've done. See, you, oh my God, this is good. Not because of what we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. And grace. Wow. Wow. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. I love it, man. The holy call. The holy call. The holy call. It's a call of consecration. Separation. It's a call. It's a call. You know when he said, come out from among them. Good God Almighty. And what messes us up is, how can I live in this and not be a part of it? Yes. See, but when you holy, you can you can be in some mess, but the mess won't get on you. All right. Not because you're better than anybody. They can be that too, if they choose to be. But because you're holy, I can live in it and it not get in me. Where you getting that from, Pastor? Go to 2 Corinthians 6, 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 said, Wherefore, come out, come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. He said, come out. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, he said, come out 
See, he's not going to call you in until he first gets you out. He said, come out from among them and be ye separated. That's the reason why we can't do everything everybody do. We can't go where everybody go. We can't watch everything everybody do and still think we holy. We wonder why we're dealing with some of the things we're dealing with. It's because you think that because you've accepted Christ, you can do anything you big and bad enough to do. And the devil, oh, good God of mine. You say, oh, man, ain't nothing but a movie. But no, what are you tripping about? Remember I told you I love action movies. I was watching one a couple weeks ago. That man was whooping them, boy. He was whooping everybody up in that joint. But as he was whooping them, he was saying some words to them. I'm he cussed everybody out up in there. If his words could have whooped them, <laughs> glory to God. And as I'm watching the movie, you got to be careful because I like action movies. I like when they're in there fighting and kicking. But if you ain't careful, after the movie was over with, I was like, ooh, where those words come? Where they coming back? Mm. Same words he was saying. I wasn't whooping nobody, but ooh, them words was coming back. Yes, sir. Yes. Because when you, watch, when you watch that stuff and you think you're big, and, what am I telling you? Well, Pastor, you can't watch it. You can do what you, whatever you think you can do. Do whatever you can handle. Uh, like they used to tell us in the military, do whatever your faith can handle. Uh -huh. They used to tell us in the military, do whatever your rank can handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you're bad enough. Yeah, well, have much rank you got. And just like on civilian jobs, they tell you, do whatever your position can handle. Mm -hmm. You know you ain't no supervisor. <laughs> yeah. But you keep on acting like one. So what we got to understand in the holy calling, when God calls us to a holy calling, now you've accepted the call of salvation. And this is the problem. Some people say, well, all I got to do is accept uh, the heavenly calling. Because the heavenly calling means I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, and all I got to do is kick back and just enjoy the ride. No. No. I wish it was that easy. I wish that was all we had to do. If we just accepted the Lord's Savior, and now we just go through life now waiting for him to call us home. But we can't. We have to live our lives. And we got to live our lives down here. Yes, we do. That's why the Bible tells you don't be, don't, you know, some people are so heavenly minded, they know earthly good. Mm. They know earthly good. They got their minds set on heaven, but you got to live down here. Mm -hmm. You got to live down here. And don't act like you so, you so heavenly minded. I, I don't go around that stuff. That stuff, you talking about that movie you watch faster? I don't watch that. Some of y'all watch worse things. <laughs> so we watch worse than that. <laughs> Glory to God. Some of us let the kids watch worse than that. They on the iPad watching. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, on the cartoon. Yeah. But you can't be so think that you're so holy. The the yeah. thing is, are so heavenly. What you have to realize, I still gotta live in this, but I cannot let this corrupt me. If I'm going to be holy for him, he said, come out from among them. He's not telling you. Remember when he called Moses? He said, Moses, come out from among your people and go to a place I'm going to show you. Yeah. Moses had to do that by faith. And even though Moses came out from around his people, where he went, there was some more people. Hello. Yeah. Some old people. Everywhere you go, everybody ain't going to be saved. Everybody ain't going to be holy. You're going to tell them, well, I, I don't go around them unless they're saved. Well, you ain't going to be going nowhere. <laughs> You're going to be at home. <laughs> <laughs> and you might have to leave that. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, you might have to get up out of that. Oh, the holy calling is a call to salvation. I mean, the holy calling is a call to separation. It's a call to consecration. What people don't realize, and see, this is the thing that gets me with people. That's why some people don't even understand. When I got to preach, people want to talk to you about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And I got to go before the church. And folks talking about talking to me about stuff. That's why my pastor told me, he said, I, only, I come to church right before I'm getting ready to mount that pulpit. I said, why is that? He said, because people be wanting to talk to you about all kinds of stuff. And they take his mind off of the scripture, and he be, they be way over here somewhere. Uh -huh. And see, that's what happens when you're walking in this holy calling. The world wants to corrupt you. The world wants to put things in front of you that will corrupt you. Now, ain't nothing wrong. I, I watched the movie. Ain't nothing wrong. I didn't heard some folks talk, have some foul language. Paul said, I become all things to all men that I might draw some people. So I don't, I don't act like I can't go around somebody because of the certain lifestyle that they live. No, I can go around it, but I got to know how much I can take of it. I got to know when to bag off of it. Yeah, Paul said, I became all things to all men. But what he didn't become was sin for none of them. 
Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He had to go down to the club and have a drink with him just to just, just to share Christ with him. That's right. Well, y'all mean I'm gonna have one. The Lord is good. <laughs> no, no, no. No, he, didn't, he didn't have to do that to show them that he fit in because what he was doing, because he came out from a mother, they ought to see a difference in him. Yes, sir. And that's what they ought to see in us. Yes. When we accept the heavenly calling and the high call and the holy calling of God, which is the next level of calling. God is not going to call you to a holy calling and you're not walking upright in the heavenly calling. He'd be out of order if he did, y'all. He wouldn't be, God wouldn't be right if he called you to another call and you ain't walking in that call. Yeah. That's the reason why he always, he's an orderly God. He does things decent and in order. Yes, sir. The holy calling is from the Father to us. And 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, 5, uh, 15 and 16, 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 says, but as he has called us, he is holy. The yes. one who called us he is holy. Is holy. Uh -huh. Be ye also holy uh -huh. in all matter of conversation. Yep. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Do you see it? It's in your Bible. Uh -huh. It's right there, First Peter, the first chapter, 15 and 16. See, the one who has called you, did you see it? Mm -hmm. The one, he that have called you, he called you out. Yes. Why did he call you out? He called you out so you could be holy. He said, because I'm holy. And look what it said, though. That's why I like it. It said, in all manner of conversation. Oh. Because don't you know your conversation will lead to your unholiness? Mm. Ooh, yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the reason why you got to be careful what you allow in these eye gates and these ear gates, because those the Bible say it's not what it's not what uh, go in a man that defile him. <laughs> and see, I looked at the movie and I told you now I'm having a thought. Ooh, ooh, ain't like I'm. Uh, uh, I ain't never heard some of them words. Some of them I put together, you know. Some of them I used. To <laughs> I, some of them I could be the author. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, Paul said I was the chiefest of sinners. Uh -huh. well, don't try to act like you're who you're not. And that's what God don't want because he can't use us when we're trying to fake it. That's the reason why the, the, the apostle said, and you know me. Yes. He said, you call me and you know me? He said, yeah, that's why I called you because I know you. <laughs> he is holy, therefore he's calling us to be holy. So now we done went through two calls, the heavenly calling and the holy calling. Uh -huh. Heavenly calling and the holy calling. He's calling us. And this, let me help you before we move on to the high calling. The, the holy calling is not, is not a denomination. Come on, Pastor. It's not an affiliation. That's right. uh -huh. It is a way of life. Yeah. We're holy because he's holy. It ain't got nothing to do with no denomination. It ain't got nothing to do with your affiliation. We're holy because he's holy. Yes, sir. You know, God don't belong. Oh, he, oh, you talking about the holiness church. No, I'm talking about the church of God. <laughs> That's the church. He's holy, therefore, he calls us to be holy. Now let's move on to the high call. Now, if you accepted the heavenly calling, he'll call you up to the holy calling. And once you accept that holy calling and you walk therein, yes. you got to walk there in it. Yes. Once you walk in that holy calling, he'll call you now to a high call. Yes, sir. And where is that found? In Philippians, the third chapter. You know it. You didn't hear it before. Verses 13 through 15. Philippians 3, 13 through 15. Those that have received and accepted this call are those who've accepted the heavenly calling and then they've accepted the holy calling. They've already accepted that call because you don't get called to the high calling of God until you've accepted those. And not only accepted them, I got to be walking in them. And that's why I say people that have been in church and they think just because I've been around something for so long, I'm surely I must be that. Mm. No, you can go today. Leave today. Go stand in your garage. Just go stand in there. Uh -huh. See how long it's going to take you to become a car. <laughs> no, just because you've been around something don't mean that you are that. Come on, 
God said you won't be that until you start to walk in that. When you get to Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th verse, this is what the Bible says. Brethren. That's not gender bias. That's brothers and sisters. I count not myself. To have apprehended. Uh -huh. Meaning I don't think I'm something and you nothing. Uh -huh. But this one thing I do. Oh man, and this is so important. See, this is where people really messed up. You can't walk in the high calling of God and you still you still got unforgetfulness in your heart. It's right here in your Bible. I didn't make it up. He says, forgetting those things <laughs> which are behind me. I reach forth unto those things which are before me. Did you hear me earlier? See, your past is behind you, but your future is in your very hands. He said, you got to forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things that are before you. What's before me? My future is in front of me. I can't get stuck in this stuff. He said, but I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Did you get it? Yes, yes. sir. He says, so let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded or like minded. If in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. See, when you get up, when you get to this level here, mm -hmm. what is the high calling of God, Pastor? It's a call of sonship. It's a call of servanthood. That's the reason why you know some people really ain't walking in what they think they're walking in. When you get to the high calling of God, you got to forget those things which are behind. You got to stop holding grudges. You got to yes. start forgiving people. Yes. Why? Because when you get to this level here of sonship, you realize and recognize God forgave me. Uh -huh. yeah, there you go. I have to let it go. I have to forgive you. Yes. Why? Because I cannot walk at this level with God and I'm still holding um, resentment in my heart. Right. I cannot walk at this level. I got to forget those things that are behind me. Yes. And let me help you right here. Don't let nobody take you back. Come on. Come on. Just because they haven't forgotten it, you got to let it go. Yes. Now they can stay back there. Uh -huh. See, don't, 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 don't go to my old address like I live there. No, you'll be there by yourself. I don't live over there. But some people will try to take you back there. And if you know you don't live there no more, don't let guilt or shame take you back there. Right. Some people use what you did back then yes. on you today. Yes. Yes. No, I don't live there no more. I'm walking in the high call of God. Mm -hmm. I didn't forget those things that are behind me. And I'm pressing for the mark. What are you pressing for? I'm pressing for my future. Yes. I'm pressing for my health. I'm pressing for my mind to be right. I'm pressing for, I'm pressing for my wealth in God. I can't remember. I can't live back there. He said, you got to press forward to the, to the prize. First, you get, see, some people, they hit the target, but they miss the mark. Mm. Some people, some people are, are listen to this message and they so stuck on me that they'll miss the message. Jesus. They listening to the man, but they don't hear the message. Oh my God. And that's the reason why sometimes we don't get what God has for us because we don't like the way it's packaged. Uh -huh. The high call is a call of sonship. It's a call of servanthood. See, a person that's walking at this level here, I don't need a, I don't need a tag nor a title. I'm a servant. Yes, sir. Why? Because he's a servant. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's calling you to be like him, to be Christ-like. That's what he's calling us to. If you go to Matthew 20 and 28, he said, the son of man did not come to be served. Some people think sitting back in the big chair, in the easy chair, uh, 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 with their feet kicked up and everybody else running around doing and, and, they, and they're called to some high position. That's not Christ. He said, the greatest among you will become your servant. That's the reason why a couple weeks ago when we talked about Easter, what we really miss, what we really don't understand, God is calling us to be like him. He didn't come in riding on a white horse. He came in on a donkey. Why? Because he wants you to know I'm meek and lonely. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can, be, you can be more powerful than some people and never open your mouth. Come on now. Mm -hmm. But some of us, because we're so caught up in the world, we do what the world do. They say, hit me, I'll hit you back. Talk about me, I'll talk about you. Cuss me, I'll cuss you. 
But the real mature person, the real strong person, the real person that's walking in the in the high call of God, they know how to restrain themselves. Yeah, I don't have to say something just because you said something. <laughs> I don't have to do something because you dared me to do it. No, that's immature. When you get to this high call of God, you're walking in maturity. You're walking in sonship. God Almighty. And don't y'all know this ministry right here, the Christian House of Praise, we were founded on this. This is what this ministry was founded on. If you go to Romans 8 and 19, you see it on a whole bunch of, of our logos around here. Romans 8 and 19, that's what this ministry was founded on. Sonship. For the earnest expectation of creation. What is that? All the world. What are they waiting on? They're waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what the world is waiting on. The problem is the, the world has come out the closet and the church has went in. And God is calling us out. <laughs> God is calling us out. He calling his people. He said, come on out the closet now. See, the world that came out, he said, but now it's time for y'all to come on out. Why? So that the world can see the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. We on the job because, because the job is 90% unsaved, we don't even act like we saved. Because we don't want to be in that 10% that's saved. Because we feel like we outnumbered. Don't you know that if it's you, if it ain't nobody up in there but you and God, you more than them. He said we more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. That's the reason why I used to be on my job. The God, God is good. <laughs> I'll be up in there saying, God is good. He, he's humble, bro. <laughs> See, because as I started to walk with him, remember I told you, you start to relinquish more to him. And I realized and recognized, see, when I first started with God, I thought that my job was greater than me and greater than he. But as I started to walk with God, God let me know. And he, oh, man, he, he said, son, don't you realize I'm bigger than your job? Your job has to be subject to me. Yes, sir. I said, huh? Yes. That's the reason why when he told me to tell my supervisor one time, a full bird come, tell him I love him. Yes, sir. I said, well, I, I'm going to wait till everybody leaves. He said, tell him right now. Holy Ghost speaking just like that. I, went, I was out I was mm -hmm. Hey, uh, <laughs> the Lord told me. <laughs> Hey, when I started talking to him and I'm whispering, he got quiet in there. <laughs> now they can all hear. Well, I'm talking to the, the colonel. You know they want it. They, they want it. <laughs> he just got quiet now. And I had, I'm already started. So I said, you out there now? I was just like Peter. I stepped in the water. Mm. Yeah. God won't let you drown. If you trust him and you step out, God will show you who he is. Yeah. He'll show you. Yeah. He'll show you who he is. I told him. I said, Jesus loves you. God loves you. And you know what that man looked at me and said? I love him too. Now, God was trying me. He was testing me. But I don't know how many people in that room he was also testing. Yes, sir. I don't know who in that room he was calling out. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know who in that room God said they needed to hear that. See, I thought I was talking to him. God said, no, I'm talking to somebody else in this room. See, he be doing stuff that you don't even understand, nor do you can wrap your mind around. Why? Because he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yes, sir. My ways are higher than your ways. Yes. So whenever he tell you to do something, don't try to figure it out. God already done worked it out. You just do what he tell you to do. That's it. Just do what he tell you to do. But you first got to have an ear to hear when he called you. Yes. This ministry was founded on Romans 8, 19. The man, all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons. What's manifestation? That means he's waiting for us to show up. He's waiting for us to stop acting shy. He's waiting for us to come out so that he can call us in. Yeah. He can call us in. Call us into what? And some people think, call us into ministry, call us into work, call us in. Yeah, he's got work for you to do because you can't sit here in the heavenly calling and wait for God to call you into heaven. Well, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I, I accepted him as my Lord and say, I'm not going out the house. I'm going to just stay right here. Some of us might as well just kill ourselves the day that we accept Jesus Christ, if that's the case. But let me help you because you think you're going to heaven. No, he said, now that you've accepted the heavenly calling, I got work for you to do. Amen. 
Mm-hmm. You don't get to just sit around now. I didn't accept it. Now, well, I guess I can put my feet up now. I didn't accept it. He said, no, now it's time for you to work. Yeah. Now, now that we understand and we acknowledge the cause, y'all got the call? The heavenly call. The holy call. Yes. And the high call. I showed you in scripture. Uh-huh. I didn't make it up. There it is in the scripture. Now, all the other callings you might hear about, they have to fall within one of these callings. It has to be a call to salvation. It has to be a call to separation. Or it has to be a call to sonship. It has to be. Because God is not an unordinary God. Every call that he calls, and them are the three main calls. Because some people think they called into ministry. He said, well, okay, you might be called into ministry. If you've accepted the heavenly calling, uh-huh. he said, but if I call you into ministry, you got to walk in the high calling. Yes, sir. Have you accepted that one? Uh-huh. See, because the high calling, when you come into ministry, he said, I'm going to have to separate you from some things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you see, so now the question for us is, which call am I operating in? Mm-hmm. Or which call am I really in? And it's not no... It's not a knock against anybody if you're not in the high call of Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Because it's stages and phases. Yes, sir. He All takes right. us from grace to grace, from level to level. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't mean you got to be, I done been in the church for 40 years. I should be there by now. No, it don't work like that. You got to live in it. You got to walk in it. You got to be about it. You can't just say, oh, I done been around. Just because I was in the military for 20 years, they just, <laughs> They told me, though, that you know, you've been here too long now. But just because you've been there don't mean you you this, that, or the other. No, you got to put the work in. God wants us to operate in all three of these calls. But we got to understand that God is a God of order. He does things decent and in order. Yes, he, he ain't just going to call you to something because you got the time and the tenure there. No, you got to be called out to be called in. Mm-hmm. What does he call us out of? He calls us out of bondage so that we can walk in liberty. Mm. Jesus. Man, I, last week when we talked about Easter, what we didn't get into, Christ ascended. Remember, he left. Because that was what Easter was about. When he came out of that grave, you know, he hung around now. They say for... Uh, uh, what, 100 days or so? How many people saw him, you know, people witnessed him? No, he's still alive. But they took him up that hill. And we remember they put him in, 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 in that tomb. Joseph's new tomb. Joseph of Arimathea. They put him in that tomb. We know they put him in there because they put two guards out there to watch. Uh-huh. But we didn't see him back out here walking around. Yeah. And then when he ascended, what we don't catch about that. Before he ascended, he He descended. descended. Oh, my God. Oh, this is good. Pastor, what this got to do with being called out? When he descended, he went down to hell. Then I started to tell Lady Wizard this other day. I got this revelation. I said, oh, my God. Let me help you. The devil is not in charge of hell. That's right. right. Come on, yeah. The devil is in hell. (laughs) (laughs) The devil ain't. We got it on my. Oh, the devil runs hell. No, the devil don't run nothing. (laughs) Jesus went to hell. Uh Opened up every cage door. Loosed every demon that was down there. And had a revival in heaven. (laughs) Glory to God. Told everybody down there, if you want to get out, he called them out. Yeah. Jesus yeah. called him out in hell. He down in hell. Had a revival, glory to God. And told every demon, come on, get up out of here. Yeah. And what he did by descending, what he did for us. Oh, my God. Woo! He gave us the power now. Glory to God. He said, it's good for me that I go. Because when I go, I'm going to send you the confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is going to give you the same power that I got. That's the reason why we don't even operate in what we're called to operate in. I can speak to problems. I can talk to an issue or a situation in my life. And I can tell it. Lose him. Woo! And in God's time. Yes, sir. Not in my time. Yes, sir. It's going to have to let go. See, some of us, we're not free. We have not come out. But we want to be called in. Mm-hmm. 
He said, I'm calling you out so you can be free. I'm calling you out so you can be loose yes. from whatever's holding you. When he descended into the lower parts, I'm going to read the scripture to you here. When he descended, he went down and took captivity. Good God Almighty. He took yes. captivity captives. Woo! What are you talking about? It's in your body. Everything that would try to capture you, God said, I took it. Oh, well, yeah. I didn't took that. <laughs> That's why the devil can't have no hold on you. That's why the enemy can't overtake you. Why? Because Jesus has already taken him captive. <laughs> Some people think the devil down in hell like he the boss. No, the devil is in hell. <laughs> he ain't down there in charge. Glory to God. God has all things under him. Here we are giving the devil some authority. Well, he over hell. You, he over no, he wants you to go, though. <laughs> the devil wants you to go. <laughs> he wants you to come down there with him. Oh, glory to God. See, as long as we're tied up, twisted up, caught up in our old life, God cannot use us in the life that he's calling us to. We can't be tied up. We can't be twisted up. We can't be in an entanglement. We got to be loose to be used by God. Yes, sir. He can't use us like he wants. You still tied up with someone. He said, what's entangled you? Mm. When he talked to the Galatians, he said, what, what's an entangled you? What's an bewitched you? Yeah. When you go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if you're in Christ, then you are a new creation. Yes, uh -huh. He says, old things, remember, remember, remember Philippians 3? Yeah. Yeah. Forgetting those things which are behind me. When, when you get to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, all things become new. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Old things are passed away. Yes. And all things have become new. Yes, sir. We got to walk in the newness of Christ. Yes. Yes, That's do. what I told you last week. My new life in Christ. Uh -huh. I died to my old life. Now I'm living my new life yes, in Jesus. Christ. Hallelujah. I'm in my new life. Yeah. I got to forget my old life. Glory yeah. to God. And see, this is the problem. We get off sometimes and go back to the old life. Look at uh -huh. uh -huh. He said, no, you don't live there no more. Why you keep going down there? Like I just want to see if they still down there. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. Keep going down there. And next thing you know, you're going to be down there. That's what Lot, Lot's wife did. She said, we out. They ain't walking that way. She, <laughs> she, she still, see, her heart was still back there. She, uh -huh. They wanted to get out. They called for Abraham to come get them, but she was, she wanted to go, but she wanted to stay too. God said, I'm going to fix it. You can stay. Mm -hmm. You can stay. Yeah, she was in entertainment. <laughs> yeah. See, God has called us out of sickness. He's called us out of sin. He's called us out of disease. He's called us out of doubt. He's called us out of depression, oppression. He's called us out of these things. He called us out of lust, jealousy. He's called us out of lack. People are talking about they lack. No, not if you're in Christ, you shouldn't lack no good thing. It's in his word. If you go to 1 Peter 2 and 11, where we started in our central scriptures today, 1 Peter 2 and 9 is where we started. But if you go to the 11th verse, you'll read this. He said, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners, and as exiles to abstain from simple desires. He called us foreigners. He called us exiles. You know what a foreigner is? That's a person that's in somebody else's country. Yeah. Uh -huh. He called us foreigners. He said, because this is not your home. Yeah. This ain't your home. He said, I called you out of this place. Uh -huh. I'm calling you to your heavenly home. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, yeah. God. Oh, man, I feel my afro coming back. And we're just traveling through this place. This ain't our home. He said, I called you out. You are a foreigner. You are exile in this place. That's why you don't speak the same language they speak down here. When you get the heavenly caller, when you get the holy caller, you speak another language. Uh -huh. And it ain't no I'm speaking in tongues riding in a Cadillac. No, that ain't the language that he's talking about. I speak. What do you speak then? I speak the word. Yeah. I speak the word. That's what I'm speaking. I speak the word. I speak a whole nother language. That's why when people are talking about one thing, you start talking scripture. That's when a problem comes in your life, you start reciting scripture. Why? Because you put a word on whatever the problem is. Yes. He said, you foreigners. He said, I want you to abstain from sinful desires. Why? 
He said, because they wage war against your soul. Come on. Mm. Jesus. It's waging war. Mm. That's the reason why you got Christians today. They think they're somewhere that they're not. they schizophrenic. They end the day, they out tomorrow. Sometimes they feel like a nut, sometimes they don't. You don't know what's going on with them. You talk to them today, hey, how you doing? They're good, they're bad, they up, they down, they in, they out. What's going on? They got a war going on inside of them that's raging, that's battling for their very soul. Scriptures refer to us as foreigners because this is not our home. Yes, sir. And the things of these of this world going to wage war with us. That's the reason why when I watched that movie, it started to, it started to wage war in me. Mm -hmm. The words started to come back to me. I could have walked up on somebody that I didn't like them. They'd have thought we was in a fight. You, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Glory to God. The desires of this world, they at war with our soul. Yes, sir. See, that's how we're in it, but we're not of it. And we know that the war that's raging for our soul, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Jesus. See, we know it's not, it's not a physical war, even though sometimes it feels like it is. It's uh -huh. really a soul war. Yes, it is. It's fighting for your soul. The enemy wants your soul. Remember, I told you, the devil is in hell, and he wants you to come. And he's doing everything he can to give you an invitation. He's doing everything he can to get you to come down there. Yeah, he acting like he ain't showing, but if you read the scripture right, his day is coming again. <laughs> Reading why, why you say again, Pastor? Because when Jesus, uh, before he ascended, he descended. He went down there and snatched the keys out of his hand. <laughs> Showed him who really was in charge. And I love it. Before they crucified my Lord, he said, you don't take my life. I lay it down. God Almighty. They said, who is this man? Now, they didn't have no problem with that. But when Jesus told them, you can take me up there, but in three days, I'm coming back. Uh -huh. Now, they took a whole lot of people up that hill, but they ain't never heard nobody talking about they was coming back. See? Most of the folks they took up there was crying, weeping, dashing, gnashing, doing anything they tell them. I want you to bow down when the music plays. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they was doing. But Jesus said, you can take me up there, but I'll be back in three days. And they had never heard that. And he must have said it in such a way. You ever heard somebody talking? You said, man, I believe what he just said. Mm -hmm. man, if nothing else, he believed what he just said. Yeah. That's the reason why, how you, why you put somebody in the guard a dead man? Mm. He did. Why y'all going? Why y'all going to dead man? They must have believed. It. And then when he got out of there, they made up a lie, and that's what the world does. He came back and told him, "Hey, he got up. Hey, we're gonna give you this money. Y'all going on home now. They don't tell nobody what y'all just said. That's what the world does. They lie. See, the desires of this world is raging for our very soul, and it's impossible for us to walk in the light of Jesus Christ while we still walking in the darkness of this world." Why are we still walking in the darkness of our past? There's some things that happen in our past that are good and bad. Some we need to remember, but some, as Philippians says, we need to forget those things and keep pressing towards the mark. Yeah. We can't walk in the light of Jesus Christ if we keep on pulling the past up, especially that dark past. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. And, oh, remember I told you, going back, getting in the cage. Now, he didn't open up all the cages. Now, what Christ will do, he'll open the cage, but he's not finna make you walk out. You got to walk out on your own. That's it, yeah. Now, he opened the door, but you got to walk out on your own. You got to get up and walk out. He said, my God, I opened it. And here's the problem. Many of us get out, and then we go back to it. We like Lot's wife. <laughs> like we missed the cave. We know what they was doing to us over there. The children of Israel, they got out of Egypt, and as soon as they got out, they was talking about how good Egypt was. Well, they had garlic and meat and we was over there. But you were in bondage. You weren't free. You had no liberty. Why would you want to go back to that? I ain't mad at nobody. They go to the club. I stayed in the club. Glory to God. But they shooting up in there. And you just say, I ain't never going back. Next week you look. <laughs> they shoot. No, they ain't shooting right now. <laughs> Glory to God. We used to do it. Told you, lady asked me, you got a gun? We're doing late. We on the floor. <laughs> this is what he's calling us to. He's calling us out to call us in. He's calling us to holiness. Yes. He's calling us to peace. Yes. He's calling us into joy. Yes. 
He's calling us into his salvation. He's calling us into healing. He's calling us into forgiveness. He's calling us into prosperity. This is what God has for us when we come out so that he can call us in. God said, I want to put you in a wealthy place. The problem with wealth, we think wealth is all about money. He said, no, wealth is about your health. Wealth is about your mind. Wealth is about you prospering in your heart. Wealth is about you having joy, peace. And holiness. Yeah. Too many people are bound by their past. I'm going to end with this. In Genesis 3 and 9, God called Abraham. He said, Abram, I'm sorry, not Abraham, Abram. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, he said, Abram, where are you? Remember, Abram was hiding from God. God said, Abram, he was calling him out then. And why was he calling him out? He was calling him out because the devil wants to bust you out. Adam, I'm sorry. Adam, I said Abel. Excuse me. He called Adam. He said, Adam, where you at? And Adam told him, he said, I'm hiding. I was hiding from you. He wasn't asking Adam where he was because God didn't know where he was. He wanted Adam to understand why you had. I, I know where everything is. He called him out. He's only calling us out today because he don't want the devil to bust us out. He called Noah. Jesus. He said, come out of your house, Noah, yeah. and get into this ark. Yeah. Now, what if Noah would have said, oh, I like my house. I don't, I don't want to leave it. No, Noah said, no. Noah said, yes. Yes, Lord. He got in that ark. And you know what happened after that. Uh-huh. And that's in Genesis 7 and 1. Then he called Abraham. He said, get thee, get thee out of your country. Some of us don't like that. Leave my country? Remember, he told you you're a royal priest of the holy nation. Uh-huh. He said, get out of this country. And that's in Genesis 12 and 1. Then he called Moses, remember, out of that burning bush? Yeah, he did. So he wanted to make sure Moses could hear him. He called him. He said, Moses, Moses. Now, when he called you by name, you know he's talking to you. Yeah. Just like he did, remember, he called Lazarus? Lazarus! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Lazarus came out mm-hmm. of that grave. Mm-hmm. He called Moses, Moses. He said, put off your shoes, Moses, for, the, yeah. for where your feet are, you on holy ground. Yeah. You stand on holy ground, Moses. And that's in Exodus 3 and 4. And guess what? He's still calling people today. Yes, he is. He ain't stopped calling people. Yeah. He's still calling us today. Yeah. But the, the question is, will you obey when he calls you out That's it. so that you can come in? Will you obey? We're standing. Mm-hmm. Father God is calling us out. Because he don't want the devil to bust us out. Mm-hmm. He said, come out when I call you. You can avoid a whole lot of problems, a whole lot of situations. Yes. Before we get ready to receive communion, this is what we do. This is first Sunday. We want to receive communion. But before we do, we want to give every one of you all that's listening to us, those of you online, those of you that's in this house, I want to give you an opportunity to accept the heavenly call. So you've got to start at first base. They don't leave me coming up here. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to accept the holy call. But well, wait a minute. We got to start on, at first base. Come on, sir. See, before we even jump into communion, let's first make sure everybody then accepted the heavenly call. Yes. Yes. A lady asked me one time, do I have to be if I, do I have to be saved to take communion? And I told her, I haven't read where you got to be saved to take communion. But who wants to suck with somebody that they don't commune with? You just go to dinner with anybody? <laughs> I mean, you just you just show up. You go to a restaurant, folks already sitting down eating. You just jump up, excuse me, y'all scoot over. Give me a sign that they got. <laughs> no, you don't know them people. So why would you sit down and have eat dinner with them? People that take communion are people that have a relationship with him. Well, how do I get a relationship with him? I have to accept the call. He's calling us today. What is he calling us to? He's calling us to salvation. And if you're listening to me today, maybe you're online, you listen to me. We'll give you time. Get your communion items together. Praise God. But as we prepare to take communion, if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, if you have not accepted the heavenly call of God, we ain't going to even deal with the holy call, nor the high call. Let's accept the heavenly call. And you say, that's me. That's me, Pastor. I have not accepted it. I want to accept that call. I want to answer that call. Yes. Well, what do we do? Right where you're at, right where you right where you may be at, if you're here in the house or you're online, you're listening to it, and you haven't accepted the heavenly call, what you can do right where you're at before we even get ready to partake of this communion, I want you to repeat these words after me. 
Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. Yes, you are. And that he sent you as a Savior for the world. I know that you sent, he sent his son to die for my sins, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I know that he rose on the third day with all power in his hands, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father, and he makes intercession for me. I renounce sin and Satan. I forget those things which are behind me, and I press toward the mark of the high call. If you just pray that simple, those simple words, we believe that you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And you receive the heavenly call. Now what you got to do, you got to get to work. You got to get in a church where you can put your hands to the plow and do the work of the Lord. Because now that you've accepted the holy calling, the heavenly calling, it's time now to move to your next level. And after that, to your next level. Yeah. As we prepare to uh, take this communion, the Bible says, as often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. And we do this as remembrance of God because this is what Jesus did even on the night when he was betrayed. That means on the night when he was talked about, when he was lied on, when he was sold out. He, and he knew it. He even told him, he said, they say, when the disciples say, who, is it me? He said, no. He said, the one who dips now. And that was Judas. Then he looked at him and told him, whatever you're going to do. Do it quickly. We take the bread just as Jesus did, and he prayed over the bread. He said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. He says, as often as you eat of this bread, you do show forth my death, my burial, and my resurrection. As often as you do it, you do so in remembrance. We do this in remembrance of him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this bread, this representation of your body, Father, which was broken for our sins and our transgressions, Father. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And they ate all of it. The Bible says after that, he had a similar saying. He said, this drink is my blood, which was shed for you, which is the New Testament. He says, my blood was shed on the cross for you. As often as you drink of this cup, you show forth my death, my burial, and my resurrection. That blood was greater than death. They took, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this juice, this representation of your blood, Father, which was said for the remission of our sins. As we drink this, we do show forth your death, your burial, your resurrection till you come again. And they drank all of it. The Bible says in Jude 24 and 25, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence and before his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. As we prepare to leave this place, Lord, but not your presence. Father, I pray now something was said or done, Father God, that would prick the hearts of your people, Father. We're still listening for your clarion call, even today, Father God, the call that you will make to call us all home again, Father. Father, I pray that we are walking in your heavenly calling, your high calling, and your holy calling, Father, until you return again. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. And amen. amen. We are dismissed. <clears throat> Hallelujah.